One of the things that we purchased before we set out on our um, kind of long relocation journey from Minnesota to Texas is this in RV slash travel trailer kind of um, mini washer and dryer. But I'm gonna show you what I do to get some laundry done. Um, it has kind of a smaller capacity, so I am having to do it more often, but it's nice not to have to always go to the laundromat. So it has two different kind of hoses, and I will preface this that these hoses are not super heavy <laughs> duty. Um, I actually kind of want to replace them because one of them actually has a little hole in it, but that's beside the point. Anyways, um, this is the water inlet hole. So essentially, it's kind of like a little funnel thing um, that you have to hook onto the faucet. So the first thing that I do is hook it onto the faucet and I'm doing um, just normal load of colors. So I'm gonna turn on the cold water because I want um, it to be filled with cold water. So then you'll hear that. Sounds like a concerning thing hearing the drip. Um, but it'll just kind of start filling the, the I shouldn't say tank, but the main part of the washer with water. So I'm adding the laundry detergent. I usually try to do that kind of before I put some of the clothes in. Um, Cause I, oh, I'm weird and I always like to like rinse the cup. Um, but I just use normal laundry detergent that I would use in a kind of household um, normal washer and dryer. So there we go, we added the laundry detergent. Um, I'm gonna grab my basket of clothes over here. Um, we kind of have a lot of collapsible bins, um, but a rule of thumb for this um, is that I kind of let, I don't let the bin get completely full, but it kind of just depends on what we've been doing, um, if we've been hiking and stuff like that, and if the laundry is like super dirty or super sweaty and stinky, you know, super fun stuff. So. Um, but just kind of add the clothes to the washer. Um, it is a lot more compact, so um, it doesn't fit a ton, which I probably push its limits, but it is what it is. Um, one thing that I also wanted to point out is that um, it has like a really short cord, so it does need to be plugged in, um, but I use this extension cord and kind of just coil it off to the side, but like, but I just kind of run it back behind to plug it in. And having this kind of bin be the indicator that it's like, when it's like around three-fourths full, that's when I will do a load of laundry. Um, when we're hooked up to water at an RV site, I like to, um, I like to try to do laundry every kind of two to three days. The other thing is dryer, using that term loosely. Um, we don't have a ton of space in the RV, but um, so I wash the laundry and I spin it. And then I actually have a laundry um, rack that I air dry and hang everything. So I don't do all of the laundry in this. Um, you know, when we are at an RV park that has really nice um, laundry laundromat facilities I typically try to do you know items that are more heavily soiled um, jeans um, towels and things that I really want to have a conventional dryer I try to wash those um, when I have access to that but this is just kind of day-to-day -day, you know like dry fit clothes yoga pants light shorts a lot of the stuff that we wear all the time. I have the full load kind of set with clothes. Um, don't want to have much more than what I had in there and I'm just kind of like one thing with this too you know a little bit different than a conventional um, you know in-home washer. Um, it's not gonna automatically turn off the water so 
definitely do not, and I'm surprised I haven't done this yet, but do not um, kind of start the faucet and have it going and then get distracted and have it overflow. I feel like that's totally something I would do. Haven't done it yet. Fingers crossed it won't happen because we don't need the trailer to turn into a lake. Fill it um, kind of up over, up over the clothes. Um, but one other thing to kind of keep in mind, um, if you're going to be using something like this in your RV, as you're filling kind of the capacity, this is a lot of water and that is all going to be, you know, flushed out into your gray tank. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, because if you're using your shower to shower, obviously, and then you're using your sink in your bathroom for kind of normal getting ready, stuff like that, um, just something to be conscious of that, you know, um, that it will fill your gray tank faster. So if you're not at um, an RV site that has the dumping capacity, we kind of have to plan around when um, we're going to do laundry and when we have the availability to kind of dump the gray tanks as well. All right, it looks like the clothes are, um, for the most part, kind of full of water. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the faucet. And I typically just take kind of, you know, my beer bong skills from college and uh, make sure that all the water is out of, raise it up, out of there. And I'm just going to tuck it here for, for safekeeping. I close the lid and the wash timer is only 15 minutes um, but typically I will kind of let it run two or three times. Um, you can then actually drain it and um, add you know additional water in and rinse it but to be perfectly honest I don't do that just because um, just because it's going to really fill up your gray tank using, you know, multiple kind of wash cycles, however you want to say it. It's really just going to fill up your gray tank. So have that first 15 minute timer started. Um, one thing that I do want to say is the first few times I used this, it was a mess. It was horrible. Um, I thought I was going to use, I had kind of a little um, shoe tray that I thought I could just set it in and not have to actually put it in the shower. But what I learned is that even when you don't have the um, setting switch to drain, which right here, there's like different settings. Right now it's on standard, but even when you don't have the setting switch to drain, which actually drains the washer, um, there is water that will come out of the drain hose, this other hose right here. Um, so especially when you're to the point where you're spinning it, there will be water that will be constantly coming out. And I definitely learned that the hard way and had water everywhere. So the first couple of times using this, it was horrible, um, but I feel like I have it down to a science. So we're just gonna let that um, go ahead and run a few cycles and then I will come back and kind of show you how to drain it and what the spinning looks like. Ran the wash kind of agitator cycle two to three times. Um, that's good for me. Um, at this point, the wash, the clothes have technically have been washed. So um, we can turn on the drain and what that's gonna do is it just kind of like sucks the water out of here um, down through this drain pipe and this is why it's so important to have it in a bathtub or somewhere that can get wet and you can see how easily the my situation using it the first couple of times um, got super messy really quick leave it there because it'll just continue to go down the drain. Um, it's essentially just taking the water out of here, but you'll see um, the, the clothes are pretty, you know, they're still pretty soaked. So um, this is the spinner slash dryer. And um, you'll see there's kind of like a little plastic piece down the bottom that kind of separates the clothes. Um, so the thing is, 
um, the capacity of the spinner isn't huge. Um, you, it's literally like two to three items can kind of fit in there depending on what they are and also um, just depending on how heavy they are too. Um, yeah, I'm just going to put like three items in there. Um, and also, so it's still kind of draining from the washer, but I'm actually going to turn the drain off because I'm going to be turning the spinner on. Um, but when the spinner goes, it actually spins it and then the water, the excess water that it spins off of it will come out that drain pipe too. And that was something that I really didn't account for um, the first time I used it, but I learned really quick. Um, so we're going to close kind of like the first initial um, cage thing. Um, it's really important to kind of make sure the clothes are in there, but that they're kind of even. Um, because that's another thing that I learned is kind of how to even the clothes out. Um, because if once you turn it on, it kind of does that, but eventually if it's, if it's in there, even it'll just kind of shimmy a little and then stop and you'll see how it's already, you know, kind of draining some of the clothes from the spinner. Um, so essentially just kind of two to three, maybe four items, depending on how big they are, and just have to run multiple spin cycles. And once the spin timer that goes five minutes is done, then I will either, depending on the article of clothing, hang it on uh, a hanger and kind of hang it over here to dry, or we also have a hanging rack that I will show you how we do it. So the first spin cycle is done take out the clothes and as you can see I mean they're like normal you know after you use a residential washer um, just damp but not soaking wet like um, I showed you before we put it in the spinner um, so essentially a lot of um, just the t-shirts and kind of yoga pants shorts stuff like that um, we have this little collapsible um, laundry rack that we actually used to use in our previous home. Um, it's nice because it collapses down and we can kind of stow it when we're not using it. It's a little bulky and we kind of have to like move it around a little bit but um, once I've done all the laundry and it's kind of full we'll kind of just set it in kind of the doorway of our bedroom because it's just kind of out of the way. Um, but um, the the washer slash spinner does a really good job at you know not having the laundry be soaking wet so typically depending on the temperature and the weather and everything the laundry will dry it takes probably about a day um, to a day and a half but um, I will essentially just continue the spin cycles with three to four articles of clothing until um, everything is done and hung on here and then pretty much um, air dry. So it really is super convenient to have um, within the travel trailer because a lot of the time I wake up in the morning, I'll get ready, I'll put laundry in and kind of do that as my morning routine. Um, so and then we're not spending a lot of extra time when we're not working sitting in the laundromat and doing chores like that. So it's really great for convenience.